Hi, I'm Akshay Baheti and welcome to the Cafe Rongen Journal Watch, where we review certain important or interesting radiology articles. So if a doctor calls you and says that there is a patient in whom he is suspecting a renal stone, the next question he would probably ask you is whether I should do an ultrasound or a CT for this patient. And it is a difficult question to answer because we know that CT is more sensitive compared to ultrasound to detect stones but also more expensive. Most people in India would generally do an ultrasound first but in the US for example a CT is often the modality of choice. So which is the correct option for the patient? Uh, this was the question asked by the authors of this NEJM article published some time back. They conducted a multi-center randomized trial across 15 emergency departments in the country and uh, patients with nephrolithiasis or suspected nephrolithiasis uh, who presented to the ED with relevant symptoms were included in this study. So what was the methodology performed? The patients were randomized into essentially three arms, either a point of care ultrasound performed by an AD physician or an ultrasound performed by a radiologist or a CTKUB. The primary outcomes measured included the incidence of high risk diagnosis with complications that could be because of a miss or delay in diagnosis by one of these three modalities chosen, the cumulative radiation exposure and the total cost to the patient. <coughs> the secondary outcomes included serious adverse events the length of the AD stay, return AD visits or uh, a hospitalization which happened after the AD discharge, self-reported pain scores of the patients and diagnostic accuracy of the modalities or rather the test arms for nephrolithiasis. And this is the interesting thing. This was all analyzed by the intention to treat principle. So what this principle essentially means is that we are analyzing the intention and not the final treatment or final diagnostic tool used. So for example a patient randomized to an ultrasound by radiologist can always get a CT further ahead if the clinician or the referring physician feels that this is required based on the clinical uh, symptoms of the patient. So the arms do not limit the doctor from using other diagnostic tools but the intention to treat remains the first test performed by the doctor. So what were the results? Overall around 2700 odd patients were included in the study and they were <clears throat> almost equally assigned to the three arms that we discussed. Um, the follow-up rate was actually excellent. Very few patients were lost to follow-up. And what were the primary outcomes? Essentially there was no significant difference in the incidence of high-risk diagnosis of complications across all the three groups. Although you can see that the point of your ultrasound has a slightly higher number of misdiagnosis 6 compared to 3 and 2 in the other two groups and that might have to do with the fact that this was performed by an ED physician rather than a radiologist. The radiation exposure was obviously more in the CT arm but it was not zero in the other two arms and that's because as I explained earlier the physicians could and often did uh, request CT scans after the ultrasound was performed based on the clinical symptoms of the patient. Uh, as far as the secondary outcomes were concerned, there was no significant difference in the incidence of serious adverse events. The length of AD stay was actually longer in the ultrasound performed by a radiologist arm and much shorter in the CT arm or the point of care ultrasound arm. <coughs> there was no significant difference in the return ED visits or hospital admissions after ED discharge as well as in the self-reported pain scores of the patient. And similarly, as far as the accuracy for diagnosis of nephrolithiasis goes, it was similar across all the three arms. And again, this is the intention to treat principle. So this is sensitive specificity for the intention to treat and not for the diagnostic modality itself. Um, <clears throat> how many patients required additional testing? Around 40% of the patients in the POC arm, 27% uh, in the radiology ultrasound arm and 5% in the CT arm required additional testing. The mean total cost was of course cheaper in the ultrasound arms compared to the CT arm and uh, this is interesting while the sensitivity of and this is of course per modality now rather than the intention to treat arm um, the ultrasound arms had a lower sensitivity compared to CT when it came to detecting stones but they were more specific so uh, around 70% specificity for the ultrasound arms compared to 60% or 58% for the CT arms and that was because the gold standard in this study was actually actual passage of stone by the as uh, elicited from the patient in follow-up or retrieval of stone by a procedure. 
uh, what was the strength of the study overall it was an excellent study very well conducted with a large sample size and good follow-up rates um, the weakness was probably that the doctors or the patients were not blinded and uh, the fact that point of care ultrasound may not be available at all hospitals so one of the three arms might not actually be available but overall what is clear is that although it's less sensitive ultrasound is an excellent initial test in patients with suspected nephrolithiasis it resulted in no need for CT in most of the patients particularly for radiologists does the study only 27 percent of the patients did a CT and uh, this obviously led to lower radiation exposure and, and importantly there was no significant difference in any adverse events or complications or pain scores in either of the three arms. So if a doctor asks you which test to perform in a patient suspected nephrolithiasis, you can confidently say that do an ultrasound first. I'd like to end with this photo of a baby olive ridley turtle which uh, we happen to uh, go to this beach called Velas along the Kokan coast and this baby had just hatched from its egg and uh, which is usually laid around 200 meters from the shore and you can see it walking or rather crawling into the sea to explore the world beyond. Um, probably the best analogy I had in a photo you know compared to a renal calculus. Uh, sorry for the bad joke but I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.